Oh, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Quigley, bringing the latest tips, tricks, and techniques for your contemporary painting and drawing needs. And we're back with another video. I do apologise, the video was meant to go out Thursday, um, and instead I'm putting it on Saturday. This video is going to be different. It's not going to be uh, urban or rural landscape like I've done over the last few videos. It's actually going to be based on lettering, more specifically typography. But what is typography and why is it so important? Well, typography basically is lettering using different typefaces. And if you didn't know what a typeface was, from hundreds of years ago, they used black letter, like this one, which is quite complex and quite um, difficult to read, to one of the most popular lettering today, which is Helvetica. Now, these are just two examples of different typefaces, and there are thousands out there. And you can make up your own too. But why is it important? Well, basically, typography enables the lettering to have an identity which communicates a certain aesthetic to the person that's looking at it. So what's the structure of this tutorial going to look like? Well, it's going to consist of three different exercises. The first exercise is that I'm going to introduce you to the boxed method. This method I've used and tried and tested over a number of years, and it helps students able to form different types of letters. So any letter in the alphabet, you should be able to master. The second activity, you'll be using those skills and adapting some of the lettering. So you're able to change the typeface. Once you're comfortable and you've had a go at doing a few of those, then you're gonna choose your favorite one and create your own word in that typeface. Now, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna set up my work on my table and then I'm gonna set the camera up and then I'm gonna rate you through the first exercise. Okay, so we're gonna dive straight into it. And the first thing that you're gonna see me do is draw out this grid that we'll be using in this activity. Now, this grid is a three by five grid and any letter in the alphabet can be drawn inside using this method. The only letters that cannot be um, are the M and W. And I'll be showing that later on what the difference uh, was in their grid. Now, what you can see I'm doing, I'm doing this very loosely. Um, I actually want you to do it a little bit more precise later on. I'm just doing this for speed purposes. Just numbering it, three columns across the top and five rows. Now, the first letter that we're gonna have a go at doing is a straight line letter, meaning there's only horizontals and verticals. And we're going to be using the lines that are already there. This one's a letter L. And you can see I'm just following the lines around and also following the perimeter of the letter. So I don't need to draw the letter inside the box. It's actually following the uh, shape of it itself. Now the second one, again, another straight line letter. This is the letter T. Again, using the perimeters and also using the lines that are already there. The next one's a little bit more tricky. This one's a letter N, and actually do some diagonal letters on there. So there's a few diagonal letters in the uh, alphabets, like a Z, um, N, R, there's a few others as well. So I've drawn that one on there. Now I'm gonna draw out another box uh, for a letter that people uh, sometimes struggle with, which is the letter S. Now this is just uh, a simple method that um, helps you with that. But first of all, when you draw it, it's going to look like the number five. But don't worry, we've got some tricks that we can sort that out in a minute. So again, very, very simple. I'm doing this rather rough. And again, you just follow those lines that are already there. Almost reminds me of like a calculator uh, when you're following those little cells. So finishing that one off on there. And then we're going to start going round the outside of this S. Take your time. Do it nice and lightly just in case you go wrong. And there we go. Again, it looks like the number five at the moment. Now, what I'm going to show you is just draw out a square. And then I want you to put a little, little marker in the middle of each uh, side of the square. I'm just highlighting there that this square symbolizes one of the small ones that within an R letter. Now, what I'm going to do is actually show you that you can draw a circle inside uh, the square and this helps obviously the s is curved we're going to be adding some curved edges rather it's being so rigid and straight so once you've done that i want you to just go to the edges of the letter just put an arc on each corner as you can see i'm just working just softening the edges of the letter there and then i just need to go inside the letter and do exactly the same i'm just going to continue doing this one speed it up a little more so you can see it quickly 
And there we are. So we're just finishing off on this S. As I say, it's very sketchy, quite rough. It's not as refined as I want it to be, but it's just to establish and show you what I've been doing. So what we're going to move on to now is actually looking at some letters um, which are of different sizes. So this one, as I said before, M and W are two letters that cannot be use, used using the 3 by 5 method. The grid that we have to complete for this one is a 5 by 5 grid. So as you see, I'm doing five columns down. It's not going to be perfect on this. I'm just literally doing it freehand and then five rows. Now, I'm only going to do one uh, for this one because the M and the W, if you flip them upside down, you'll get exactly the same uh, shape. So it's a win-win situation when doing that one. So I've drawn just numbered them there. And then, as I said on this one here, this is for M and W. So I'm just going to get working on here. And again, this one's quite tricky. You've got to go from diagonals. So you can see that I'm going from one edge of one column to the edge of another one. So hopefully you can see that. I know it's uh, I'm doing it rather quickly. Um, and this is complicated at the start. So there's going to be a lot of lines all over the show until you start adding those darker lines in to establish the main shape on there. And I've done this many, many times. So if you don't, uh, you know, if it take a lot longer than me, do not worry about it. So there you go. So I've got the M on there uh, equal in all the areas of it. I've just flipped it over there so you can see it. And then just going back to uh, the M on there. So hope you understand that one. OK, so hopefully you've understood um, just the method that I'm using. Now I want you to be a little bit more serious and a little bit more precise and neat uh, within your sketchbook or piece of paper, whatever you're using. And what I'm actually doing now is just splitting up my three pieces of paper just with a line down the middle or just slightly to the left. And I'm going to use the left hand side for uh, experimenting with letters and then I'm going to use the right hand side uh, for producing a final outcome. Now, I'm using a ruler now, so I'm being a little bit more precise. And the measurements that I'm doing are three centimetres across and five centimetres down. Um, you do need to be quite precise when doing this um, if you want to get a really, really good outcome. The only things that I would suggest is that you work really lightly because these lines are scaffolding lines. And what I'm being by the scaffolding lines is that they are not going to stay there uh, for the duration of your drawing. They're just there to support it while you're working things out. So I'm just going to work back doing this at the moment. Um, uh, once I've finished it, then I'll move you on to the next one. Okay, so I've quickly drawn out the first one. This second one is exactly the same. The only thing and that is different is that each section, um, each square is going to be two centimetres rather than one. So we're doubling the size. So it's going to be six centimetres across and 10 centimetres down compared to the first box, which was three centimetres across and five centimetres down. So I'm going to quickly get this done. Really simple. And actually what you can have a go at doing is complete a few more boxes. So I'm just going to do a very, very quick time lapse of sketching a few more boxes out and then we can start actually getting to the nitty gritty of drawing. Okay, so I've quickly drawn out a few other boxes on there. I am just going to go revisit just this one at the moment uh, very quickly. I'm actually going to draw the box, but my two vertical lines are slightly slanted. And if you, uh, I'm going to put it on the screen now, if you look at the lettering from the uh, brand Nike, um, then basically you will see that the two vertical lines are slightly slanted forwards to make it look like the letter is moving forwards. And the way you do that is that I've just drawn four centimetres across and four centimetres down. And if you see when I'm doing my verticals, I'm actually drawing the end of the uh, first column to back to the first uh, element of the column on there. And the same on the second one end of the uh, line on there and then just coming back to the uh, start of the column and then we've got an identical uh, vertical line at the start and then the end the horizontal lines are exactly the same so there's no difference there but once you've done that one um, you've got the ability to do some lettering that almost gives it the style of italics
Okay, so hopefully you followed that and you managed to do uh, a few boxes. I know it's quite time consuming, but it's worth the while in the end. And the first letter I'm going to have a go at doing is the letter T. You can start with your own name. Um, it's probably the easiest way to, to start into it there. And as you can see, just playing around with getting a very, very simple letter on there. Now, what I'm just going to show you on this one, just to add a little bit uh, to it and make it a little bit more... Um, advanced is I'm just going to make it 3D and the way I've done there is just on a 45 degree uh, line uh, from each corner I've almost extended the grid there I don't know if you can see that um, and then hopefully you will see that I now looks like I've got a 3D uh, letter T so that's quite a, an easy one if you do want to have a play around with uh, doing that you can do it on the other side as well now after this one um, I'm going to have a go just drawing another T uh, just in the ones that I've got already. Um, and on this one, I'm actually going to have a go at doing a beveled letter. So if you've ever seen any um, letters that are carved in stone, um, we'll try and recreate uh, the letter by just coming up from the corners to create some triangles. And then you do like almost like a supporting line that goes from one to the other one. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this one. If anyone wants to, uh, to do another video, uh, just on bevel lettering than I can do uh, but I'll show you the final outcome of this one uh, of this one here to see what you what you think of it now let's move on to the larger letter uh, one of my favorite programs at the moment is uh, Stranger Things so I thought to myself right I'll have a look at the lettering uh, from the uh, series Stranger Things and this one is just going to be the R from the lettering now the first thing that I'm going to do is draw the standard R first of all again it's just putting those scaffolding uh, lines on there you've got like a very you know support drawing to start off with make sure you do it lightly though because you will be rubbing out some areas of this one now the first thing that I notice with the R is that uh, the top section and the bottom section have these little things I call them feet but they're actually called serifs so uh, you have sans serif letters and then you got serif letters. So these ones have serifs at, serifs at the bottom and the top. So they're just like little uh, little areas that come out from there. I also noticed on the R from the letter and the Stranger Things that the uh, bottom of it is, is slightly taller. And the, uh, the bulbous end of the R is smaller also. So you can see now I had the original R but now I'm changing it. Uh, being a little bit more creative how I'm doing it. Now, one thing that I do want you to stress is that, see the horizontal lines that are going across? They can be moved up or down. So, at the moment, the first row, um, that's just touching the middle of it, what I'm just rubbing out now. You could actually move that line further upwards, um, which I should hopefully show you. Um, and this basically means that you can move these lines there you go. So I'm putting that line in. That is actually that line that was there before. And now that helps me to decide the top um, area of where the, the middle of the O inside the R is going. So I've started to adapt it slightly. And then we've just got to do the last bit now. And it actually can creep outside the box as well. So don't be afraid of just keeping it inside. Again, it's there just to support it. You can adapt it afterwards. So I've got two more things that I want to show you. The first one is a drop shadow, and I'm actually going to use a diagonal letter for that. So you can see actually my letter is slightly slanted. Um, this letter N, can you see those dots that I'm putting on there? The lines, the diagonal lines that I'm putting towards end up in another column. And so that's how you get that quite regimented line and it's equal from the top to the bottom. So just when you're doing diagonal letters, whether it be an N, a Z, an R, that those are the things are considered. So I'm just outlining some of these letters. This letter actually is from the uh, brand Nike. Um, their letters tend to uh, lean forwards, which fits in with the brand, which is a sports brand. And you'll find that happens quite a lot where the, the lettering fits in with the identity, or, as I said before, with the brand. Now, this drop shadow, I've just literally recreating the N, but slightly further down. So you're going to be able to see, it's almost going to look like it's hovering Um over the surface which is quite a nice look it's slightly different to the 3d one that i did earlier but definitely worth a try if you want to have a go 
Now, the second one that I want to have a go at doing is the Adidas logo, um, the lettering for Adidas. Now, with this one, it's slightly different because they're all lowercase letters. So instead of doing a three by five grid, you're literally just going to do uh, separate into sections. Um, and these are squares. So I'm just measuring these out very loosely. Obviously the only letter that's in the word Adidas that doesn't need to be a square is for the I. And you can see that on mine, it's just quite, uh, it's a lot thinner than the rest of them. Now what the beauty of this is, I'm just putting circles um, in every single one. I'm just using those little dashes there that I talked about earlier in the video. Um, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see how easy this lettering can be achieved. So by putting a circle across all of them, I'm gonna start with the A. So it's just got only one vertical, which is on the edge of the A there. I'm just darken out some of the lines so you can see it. And then for the D, similar to the A, but it's got a larger uh, side in for the D there. Moving on to the I. Again, very, very simple. Making sure that all the letters are at the same height, that is an issue. If you, uh, if you don't look, you've just got to make sure that it all fits in with the other letters and also the circles of the same size. So finishing this one off. Look at the circles, making sure it's all right. So that's it guys for the tutorial on the introduction to typography. Hopefully it was informative for you. Hopefully you're going to give some of these tips and techniques a try. Um, and if you like this video, then please hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see similar videos, then subscribe to the channel and tap that notification bell. But yeah, until now, I will leave you with a time lapse that I'm going to set up for. And I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Bye.